Meat Boy is definitely not back because today we are making sourdough bread. I actually did a recipe some years ago now, I think three or four years ago. Definitely long overdue. And I actually created this recipe we're doing today from a recipe for Pondi Campania on King Arthur Flowers website. So this is adjusted because of the type of flour we're using different water, all that type of stuff. So you probably want to follow this uh, if you are using a high quality organic white flour. And there's also a bunch of like kitchen equipment and things that you might not have. So all of that is going to be available on my Amazon shop, including the flour and all the food and stuff. And you guys can go to Frankie's Range Foods if you need your own sourdough starter. But let's get started. Welcome to the floor of my kitchen. I do not have enough counter space, so here we are. Big bag of organic flour from Great River Organic Milling. This is on my Amazon shop, as well as all the other stuff, as we mentioned earlier, guys. So be sure to check that out. You just want a high quality, freshly milled white flour. Then we have some salt from Frankie's Free Range Meat. We have our sourdough starter that's available on Frankie's Free Range Foods, glass bottled mineral water, and some organic liquid coconut oil. You don't need to put oil in this. I mean, you could do butter too, or you could just not put any fat in it. It does make the dough a little easier to handle. If you do not have a sourdough starter, to make one, you basically put flour and water equal parts together in a bowl. Let that sit on your windowsill for a few days. Keep adding water and flour to it. And after a week and a half, two weeks, the natural yeast in the air, the wild yeast will take hold and you'll have a starter or you could just get it good to go, ready, frankiesrangefoods.com. This is $12, and it's the only sourdough starter available online made from organic flour, glass bottled mineral water, packaged in glass. So definitely a special product. So we're going to start off with a big stainless steel bowl on the scale, and we are going to measure out 325 grams of water. The hydration ratio of the dough will dictate how hard it is to handle. Uh, higher hydration generally means the bread's gonna be more moist as well as have more air bubbles in it. So it's a trade-off for the dough being much harder to handle. So we're going with a lower hydration dough here. Once you have 325 grams of water, we have to heat it up. So we're gonna take this to the stove. So I threw my steel bowl over a high heat. I have my thermometer here. And we just want the water to be about 85 degrees because if it's cold, then the sourdough starter really isn't going to start fermenting. And it could take three, four, five hours just for uh, the dough to get to the right temperature if the water you put in there is cold. So just tempering the water, making sure it's above 80 degrees is very crucial. Now if you, you just want to finger test it, you know, just make sure the water is warm. The water feels warm to your finger, it's fine. You don't need an instant read thermometer. Even if the water's a little hot, that's okay because uh, the flour is like room temperature, so it's gonna bring the temperature down. So we're gonna zero out the scale and add the rest of our ingredients. You want 10 grams of salt. And it seems like a lot, but it's almost not even enough. It's honestly almost like a handful of salt that you're putting in this bread. But 10 grams of salt. And on top of that, we're gonna add 15 to 20 grams of oil. You don't want to add too much because you will taste it in the final bread if you do. And then we're going to add our sourdough starter. Uh, this is a two ounce jar, so it's about 60 grams. Let's try to add most of it. Now, if you want to make a bigger loaf or like double or triple this recipe, you might have to feed your starter a little bit. You know, add some flour and water to this. Let it sit for a day so that you have a higher volume of starter uh, to begin your bread. You know, that's fine. I'm not going to go crazy and like scoop this out. Now we will zero out the scale again and add our flour. We're going to do 500 grams. All right, so now we're going to mix it up. So two more things here. One, we have a bowl of water to dip our fingers in, which will prevent the dough from sticking to our hands. And two is our pastry cutter, which is going to be very helpful for shaping this, moving it around and just scraping the extra flour off the sides of the bowl. You can wear gloves for this part if you don't want to get too much flour on your hands, but later on when we're actually like shaping the loaf, 
you don't really want to wear gloves because the flower will actually stick to the gloves easier uh, than your hand, which honestly seems pretty hard to believe right now. So scraping the sides down with the pastry cutter, squeezing the dough together. Now the nice thing about sourdough is there's no kneading. You know, the timing is important and it does take a decent amount of effort, but you know, you're not actually physically kneading the dough for that long. I lied, you should definitely wear gloves because it wasn't as sticky as this. This is a mess. Now that the dough is mixed together, we enter the auto lease process, which is the water hydrating the flour. So over the course of the next hour, we are going to fold this dough in 15 minute intervals to build up the gluten structure. Right now it's pretty sticky, it's hard to work with, it's not really staying together, but that will change very quickly. 15 minutes has passed, so we're gonna do our first round of stretches on this. I usually do about eight. We could see the, uh, the dough is already like kinda stuck to itself, so you might have to hold it down. If the hydration is a little higher, it's, it's easier to stretch it, but we just want something easy to handle later. Okay, so we'll wait another 15 minutes and do another round of stretches. All right, another 15 minutes. We will do another set of folds. One, two, three, three and a half. Four. As you can see, it's very tight. So we're definitely building up the gluten. All right, we're gonna give it 15 more minutes. And honestly, I don't do this most of the time because I forget and the bread still turns out okay. So, you know, if you don't wanna sit here for an hour or do this every 15 minutes, then you could just start with the next step, which is the fermentation. But We'll do this two more times to be professional. Man. You guys having fun yet? <laughs> Round number three of the stretches. It is so toy. It's like fucking glue. Oh my God. Now, even with my limited knowledge of baking, I'm pretty sure that I've stretched this enough because I can't even like pull it anymore, but uh, we'll do one more for the sake of the recipe. All right, all right, our final fold has arrived. I'm just dipping my hand in the water each time so it doesn't stick. And we're adding a little more hydration to this dough, which definitely use it okay so we have our nice ball of dough ready to rise lose my fucking mind now depending on the room temperature will dictate how long this takes to rise it needs to double in size so if it's really hot in the summer and you used a lot of starter hey it might be five or six hours but if it's cold in the winter it could take 12 16 hours so this needs to poof double in size here i have an old food dehydrator that actually has a rising bread setting, uh, but we do need to cover this because it will dry out on top. Uh, these cool stainless steel bowls with the covers are available on my Amazon shop as well as most of the other stuff that you guys will see today that you may not have. Now for me, this gets a little hot. So I'm not gonna actually close this. I'm just gonna kinda like leave this over here almost, not even inside the dehydrator. And then when I wake up in the morning, it should be doubled in size. Uh, you know, if you have like a boiler room or if you have the heat on in your bedroom, uh, that's also a pretty good spot to put this. Uh, but it has to be warm enough for the natural yeast in that starter to, to kind of break down and ferment all of the fresh flour. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is the next morning. So we can see our bread has risen to some degree, dried out a little bit on top, but uh, that should be okay. You could tell there's 
a lot of air bubbles. So now we have to put this into the final shape for the second rise. So now we have our risen dough. This is a wooden bread basket. You could also probably just use like a big bowl with a towel lined in it. We have a half cup of flour or so. We have our water to dip our hands in earlier. And we have our pastry cutter. As you guys can see, this is kind of cluttered. If you had more counter space, this would be like 10 times easier. But, you know, since we're only doing one loaf of bread, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're doing like two or three and you have to separate the dough, it's going to be really, really messy and you want a lot of counter space. So we're going to put our bread basket off to the side for now. We need the pastry cutter right now. We don't really need the water yet. Oh, we do. We do need the water. So you also need some type of sifter or strainer. We're gonna pour some of the flour in here. And then I'm gonna dust flour all over this board so we have a nice even coat and that this bread doesn't stick too much. Don't be afraid to put a lot of flour down and use a lot of flour here to prevent it from sticking because even if the bread bakes with like a thick crust of fresh flour on it, it'll still be delicious and that'll still just scrape right off. So it's not really that impactful. So now I'm just gonna take my pastry cutter and scrape the dough out of this bowl because it is pretty stuck. Here's where you want to be as careful as possible because if this starts sticking, if it sticks to the cutting board and you mess up the shape a lot, you might have to like restart. So you might have to put this back in the bowl, mix it up with a little more water and flour, let it rise again uh, before you have something that's workable. So I'm going to dip my hands in water and we're just going to perform four simple folds. We're going to fold it in, in, and then flip it over so that the seam side is down and then we should have our final dough shape. So I'm gonna take the left side, fold it over, the right side, fold it over, okay? Wet my hands again so they don't stick. We're gonna take the top side, fold it over, and I'm being really gentle here. I felt like gas and air release as I pulled this dough, and we don't wanna to release too much of that. We want as much gas to stay in the dough as possible. And I'll take the final fourth side and flip it over. So now we want to take this and then flip it over one more time. So I put it over here because I want to just redust the bottom here a little bit so we ensure that it doesn't stick. Then I'm going to shift my dough over here this is pretty much perfect except the the top did dry out a bit so it doesn't really look perfect but shape wise and with the amount of air see that big bubble shape wise and the amount of air that we have in this loaf is excellent 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 you can kind of like push your fingers in around if if you want to shape it a little more like if it's uh, if it's a little out on this side, you can push it in here. If it's a little out on this side, you can kind of push it in. But you just want a circle. Now, since that seam is kind of just formed, we got to let this sit for like 10, 15 minutes before we move it so that the flour can kind of settle and the seams can stick together. So let this rest for another 10, 15 minutes, and there should be no more resting after this. So it's been about 10 minutes. The dough has spread out a little bit. This is the kind of last hurdle. If you do this without messing up, there's nothing else to mess up. Uh, but when we like go to scoop under this bread to put it in here, it, it's pretty easy to tear it apart and stuff. So first we want to add more flour to this so it doesn't stick on the inside because we're going to flip this over in this way. So I'm going to put a light dusting of flour on top of the bread. And normally you would only have to dust and flour this, but Mine's kind of messed up. Like I tried washing it and drying it out, but it's not as soft and pliable as it used to be. So I think this cloth has to go in the dryer or something. Light dusting on this too. And then we're just gonna take our pastry cutter and our hand, go under here, 
and flip it over inside. It should be that easy if you adequately floured the board, which as you can see now, there's like no flour here. So if it sticks to the board and you don't get it in like perfectly upside down, there might be an issue. But now we just cover this and put it in the fridge. Now, depending on your schedule, you can leave this in here for anywhere from eight to 12 hours. So this is like a second ferment. The dough is rising slightly. It's building up more flavor. Honestly, if you just leave it out for like an hour or two, you can probably bake it just fine. But um, this is what the recipe calls for. The time is nigh. Our bread baking nightmare is almost over. Uh, now we got to heat up this pot then cook the bread. It's going to be about two more hours. So you have, I would say an hour and 15 minutes of prep in the beginning. Then it's a 12 hour fermentation. Then it's another 15 minutes of prep. And then you have an eight hour fermentation. And then it's uh, about two to three hours to cook it. So we're talking a 24 hour process from when you start making the bread. You have to keep that in mind. And the bread is kind of fresh for two days. And then the third day, it's not that great. So here are some more goodies you can find on my Amazon shop or locally. Uh, this is a Lodge cast iron Dutch oven. This was like $99 at Target. I think it's actually cheaper online. I'm sure most of you guys have one. I did not, so I had to buy one. This is necessary. I tried making the bread uh, a few times without this, and it was okay. But then when I used the Dutch oven, it turned out much, 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 much better. Definitely worth it. Uh, you also want some silicone heat proof gloves that you really, really trust. Uh, these actually came with uh, some of these too. So you can do like a double layer protection because this is going to get really, really hot and you want to be super careful about it. And then we have some parchment paper and I just have a Sharpie, a marker uh, because we are going to cut out a circle resembling the bottom of this so that we can just drop the bread into it. You all see it makes it really, really easy and uh, convenient to put it in and take it out. So first I'm just going to put the parchment paper over the top of the Dutch oven. And then with my very poor penmanship skills, I will trace this. I'm actually right-handed, but when I was younger in school, I had a crush on this girl that was left-handed. So I kind of taught myself to write with my left hand a little bit, but uh, my right hand is still substantially better. So we trace this. Now we want to set our oven to 500 degrees, which is the highest temperature for my oven. And you could also do 450. Um, so it's either 450, which I'm going to do for about an hour, an hour and 15 minutes, or you can set the oven for 500 for 45 minutes. And then we're going to put this heavy piece of shit metal into the oven. Now I kind of know how the bottom of this fits the Dutch oven because there's like a curve on the bottom. So it's not exactly the entire size of the rim. So I'm going to go about, you know, an inch, an inch and a half in from the circle when I cut this. So here we have it. So we'll see you guys in about an hour. So the Dutch oven has been preheating for one hour. We're going to take our bread out of the fridge. You guys like my cardboard collection? Looks a little deflated. Honestly, I think it's been in the fridge about 10, 11 hours now, so a little too long, but uh, it should still turn out pretty good. So now what we're gonna do is put our kind of parchment paper circle on top of this. We're gonna take a cutting board, put it on here, and then just flip it over. And then if you put enough flour, it should come off just fine. If it starts sticking here, then uh, <laughs> you got an issue. Uh, it could very possibly ruin the bread if it did not have enough flour, but we're good. So now we just wanna make sure this is in the center. Now you can't really take this flour off, but after we bake it, we'll be able to scrape some of it. And this is where I lack artistic capabilities. So you take a razor blade, they make stuff for this. Um, I even like using a sharp serrated knife. You can make a design, but you just need to make a slit so that the bread can split uh, and rise in a certain area. So I just do a thin slit right down the middle. When I have my beautiful Russian wife, she will have very dexterous fingers and be able to make all sorts of ornaments. And then you guys can buy her bread that has an upcharge because it's made by a Russian girl and it's creative. <laughs> what would the people on TikTok call this now? The bread-osi? 
bread OC. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Now we will take our dangerously hot cast iron Dutch oven. Okay, take the lid off. Then we have to take our bread and drop it in the middle, just like that. Nothing crazy. Then we put the lid back on the Dutch oven, back in the oven. And I'm not sure if steaming it now makes a difference, uh, but this is gonna go for 20 minutes with the lid on, and then we're gonna take the lid off for 25 minutes. So 45 minute total bake time. I like to uh, steam it both times because, you know, maybe there's like some steam that kind of gets in, but probably not initially. So it's been about 20 minutes. What are we gonna call the bakery, boys? Frankie's Fresh Buns? I don't know, I'll think of a better name. So we gotta take the lid off. That looks great. Let me get in closer for you guys. You can see it has risen substantially into a nice round circular shape. And I am potentially ruining my bread by letting all the heat out of the oven. But that's okay. So now we want the steam. So we're gonna pour some water. People use ice cubes, but I just use water. I don't know if it makes a difference. And then we're gonna push this a little further back in the oven. And now it's gonna brown for about 20, 25 minutes. Problem with bread is, you know, if you mess up any step of the way, if it's too much time, if you do something wrong, if the temperature is not right, there's so many things that can go wrong that will really, really impact the outcome of this. You know, if you undercook this for five minutes, it's gonna be a little gummy and wet on the inside and it's gonna be so dense and basically ruin the bread. If you overcook it for like 10 minutes, then, so we'll see you guys in 20 minutes. So hard, but that's not necessarily that bad. Uh, the most important thing overall is the fermentation and the timing. Uh, so if you get those two things right, you know, when you're shaping the dough, when you're cooking it, it's not going to be as impactful. But, you know, if you did get those things right, you definitely want to pay attention here and make sure you don't cook it too long. So without the Dutch oven, the bottom isn't going to be cooked enough, usually. Even if you use like a steel plate or, or thing in the oven and heat it up, you need the Dutch oven for this because if you guys try this recipe and you don't have a Dutch oven and it doesn't turn out right, that's why. All right, the moment of truth. All of our pain and suffering has come down to this one moment for our bread. Looks amazing. Honestly, the best loaf that I have ever made, uh, mainly because of how much it has risen and that's probably because I actually adhered to the time restraints of the recipe for once instead of being lazy. This comes right out, no struggle at all, just there you go. And then I will leave this to cool off like this, usually overnight. However, if you are hungry for some fresh bread, maybe you want to dip it into your barley peasant soup, you can have this now. So you would just, you know, take a towel and then start slicing away. And then that, that one slice will cool off a lot quicker than the rest of the bread. In regards to getting this excess flour off, I usually wait until the bread cools off a little bit to do that, but um, it comes off pretty easy with a knife. You know, I'd rather have the excess flour on the bread and make sure that it doesn't stick and that it's nice and easy to make as opposed to uh, having a little less. So, looks awesome. Awesome crust. This is, uh, this is really special. Decent job. All right, so we'll see you guys in the morning. We'll let this cool off. So it has been a few hours. I decided not to wait until morning because I don't want to be uh, editing this 30 minute ridiculous sourdough video in the morning. We'll try some now. Now this is by far the best rise I have gotten out of any loaf. And if we look at the crumb here, it's still pretty dense uh, compared to your regular bread, but uh, to get these really large air bubbles, you need a, a pretty good and long fermentation. I think this could have actually uh, fermented for a little longer, but I mean, to me, uh, this is basically a perfect bread. It's, it's very, very good from a crust perspective. It's soft on the inside, rose excellently.
And let me tell you guys, once you actually have good bread, you'll know why I went through all of this to make this. Flavor, the freshness, it's phenomenal. You can eat this just on its own with nothing added to it. Perfect, crust isn't too hard. Really soft inside. This is so good. So delicious. So this is at its best. It's okay for about a day. The second day, it's not as good. The third day, you wanna put a little water on the outside and warm it up in the oven before you eat it and it'll still be good. One of these loaves usually lasts me about three days. I'm supposed to be making dinner, but this is so good. You know, I was looking at a focaccia recipe and it's actually a lot simpler than this. You don't have to do the folding during the auto lease and there is no second rise in the fridge. Uh, you just oil it into like a sheet pan and then bake it in the oven. So maybe we'll do that recipe video when I can tolerate filming this much again. Cause just making this bread on its own, it's a decent amount of work, but then when I have to film it and make sure the timing's right and all that stuff, it's triple the work. But that'll be it guys. Hopefully you are enjoying bread as delicious as this sometime soon. As I mentioned earlier, we have all the stuff on the Amazon shop and the sourdough starter available on frankiesfoodrangefoods.com. So, hey, hopefully sometime in the future we have a Frankie's Bakery, but I think in the, in the short term, I might start milling my own flour and my own grains with a grain mill. Um, just to have the freshest stuff possible. So guys, please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And of course, check out frank if you'd like to support me through those businesses. I'll see you guys soon.